Andrew Knox in for Gordon Robertson today. One of the nation's most prestigious high schools is under investigation by Virginia's Attorney General, all because several school districts may have discriminated against high-performing students in the name of equity. At least 13 schools failed to notify students that they won national merit honors. And they failed to notify them in time for college application deadlines. CBN's Brody Carter reports. Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology is ranked as America's number one high school, according to U.S. News & World Report. Now the Attorney General is investigating the Fairfax County School for unlawful discrimination. We know that the admissions went from Thomas Jefferson being about 72, 73 percent. Asian American down to uh, 50 percent, 50 some percent. So it was, it was close to a 20 point drop. Instead of academic performance, Attorney General Jason Mayeres is looking into whether an equity based admissions policy by Fairfax County Schools means Thomas Jefferson is guilty of violating the state's anti discrimination statute. He notes that the Fairfax Public School Superintendent paid an equity consultant $455,000 for nine months' work. We know that this equity consultant made a series of recommendations to the school district. One of the recommendation is equal outcomes for every student with no exception. Well, you hear the word equity all the time, and, and the point I like to make is that equity without excellence is emptiness. Meanwhile, a second investigation at the same school raised other questions regarding treatment of students. We started to look into the admission standard at Thomas Jefferson High School. You have to apply to attend. And then the national merit issue popped up. That issue being at least 13 Virginia schools failing to notify students of their national merit scholarship status in time for college application season. The award honors the top 3% of students nationwide with scholarship opportunities. Mayeris now expanding the investigation to determine if the schools withheld the information from students because of their ethnic background. It is two branches of the same tree. We're looking at the admission standards at Thomas Jefferson High School, which is a, a governor's school you have to apply to attend. And then we're also looking at what was the reasoning why you had the systemic problem of failure to recognize all of these National Merit Award winners, over 70% of which were Asian American. Uh, were you deciding not to do that? because of their racial or ethnic background. My initial thought was, did you find out about this like months ago and just didn't tell your mom, <laughs> you know, because he's a 16 year old kid. Shana Yashar says her son is one of those students notified more than a month after the awards went to Thomas Jefferson. The school's director of student services tried to explain why. He told me that they were holding on to them so that they could hand them out at a discreet time so as to not hurt the feelings of the kids that did not receive the award. This delay could cause Shauna's son and more than a thousand students at those schools to miss deadlines for adding the recognition to their early college and scholarship applications. We know that by a rough count, over a thousand students have been affected. Uh, we're trying to determine how many years this has been going on. The attorney general plans to update the public with additional information as the investigation presses forward. Brody Carter, CBN News. Thank you, Brody. I wasn't even sure I heard that right at first. Four hundred fifty was it four hundred fifty-five thousand dollars for nine months for this equity consultant, and of course, this is not going to prepare students for life. All this. You know, the equity and preparing students, we're going to create a soft generation. And to think 13, at least 13 schools, not telling hardworking, accomplished students about their scholarships in time for college applications. A lot of concern here. Certainly glad the attorney general is looking into this. In other news, a showdown is brewing on Capitol Hill today as the deadline to raise the government's debt limit approaches. Wendy Griffith has that story and more from the CBN newsroom. Wendy? Andrew, earlier this week, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen predicted we'd hit the debt ceiling today, meaning the government can't borrow more money to pay its bills. However, the divided Congress isn't ready to make a deal. Republicans concerned about the nation's 31.5 trillion national debt want Democrats to agree to spending cuts before they'll vote to raise the limit. The White House says the debt limit needs to be raised without negotiations. Yellen says her department can take, quote, extraordinary measures to allow the government to meet its most pressing obligations until June. Well, in Buffalo, New York, a man who rescued two dozen people from a record-breaking Christmas Eve snowstorm is being rewarded for his heroic acts. The Buffalo Bills organization and Blue Cross Blue Shield presented Jay Withy with two tickets to the 2023 Super Bowl. 
Retired running back Thurman Thomas told him, you're our hero. With he broke a window at a nearby school to give trapped motorists, including several senior citizens, shelter from the high winds and deadly cold. Inside the school, he collected snacks, water, juice, blankets to help the group wait out the storm. He also borrowed the school snowblower to get more people off the roads and into the building where it was warm. The school did not press charges or even accept payment for the broken window, which I think is phenomenal. So what a hero, probably saved some lives, and now they have a great story to tell. Andrew. Absolutely, Wendy. And he might be able to see his uh, hometown Bills in the Super Bowl. Never know. I mean, what a great story. People, everyday people being heroes. And uh, just he made an incredible impact on people in that disaster. And again, might be able to see his hometown squad in the Super Bowl. Terry, I'm sorry, your Packers will not have a shot as they are out of it. But as we say in Green Bay, there's always next year. Of course. <laughs> NFC East coming up big. You got the Eagles, Giants, Cowboys still, yeah. still active. Very, very good playoff season. Before you were born, before the foundation of the world, you existed in God's mind. And he knew that the world would need you right now, today. Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. The latest audio teaching from Gordon Robertson. I want you to know who you are in God's eyes and what God's word says about you. You are exceptional because you are one of a kind. There's nobody else like you in the entire universe. You reflect him in ways that only you can do. You have unique abilities, a unique destiny, a unique purpose. When God looks at you, he's looking at you through eyes of destiny. Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. Yours when you become a CBN partner. Available now. I want to introduce you to the Cromwell family. They wanted to live the American dream. So to them, that meant owning their own home. The problem, their dream seemed out of reach. Because over the years, the couple had racked up a massive amount of debt. Michael, an educator, and Sandy, a case manager for the disabled, met on a Christian singles website. They hit it off and fell in love. A year later in 2010, they married. It was a long hoped for first for them both. And along with that hope, the Cromwells dreamed of something else. Another part of, I guess, the American dream, you know, is owning a home. I really wanted to host Thanksgiving. That was something that was really important to me. My, all my family over have some space to do that. We prayed about it and we asked God to lead us in the right direction and the first thing we started doing was going to lenders. With a combined debt of over $40,000, they didn't qualify for a home loan. Michael's student loans were part of it, however, they both had racked up credit card debt in college. And I jumped on the bandwagon, I was like, oh yeah, credit cards, free money got a couple of credit cards, maxed them out. I did not save. It all went to what I wanted to do, having fun, partying. Sometimes I could barely pay my rent. And then it was like, oh, you gotta pay this stuff back. It's, it's really not free money. If a credit card bill came, I wouldn't necessarily pay it or pay it on time. Michael was a newspaper reporter when he turned his life over to Christ. Later, while serving in the army, he began tithing and also reading the Bible going to church and watching Christian TV. Pat was, uh, he was a part of that. Okay, God speaking through the prophets says, bring your tithes into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house and see if I improve me this day, if I don't open the windows of heaven, look at that, and pour you out a blessing until it overflows. Sandy knew about tithing from her mother and grandfather, a Baptist minister. Yet out on her own and in credit card debt, she believed she couldn't afford to tithe. My mindset was, I need to pay my bills first, then give to God if there was anything left over. That cycle lasted into Sandy's mid-30s. I just felt like something needed to change because my circumstances were not changing. I was still behind in my debts. I was like, I need to trust God. You know, he's been in my life all these years. So I started tithing. First fruits, I would, you know, do my 10%. Then I would pay my bills. By the time they married, they were both committed tithers, and they'd stopped credit card spending. However, their mediocre credit scores and an old judgment on Michael's credit history 
was why they were denied the home loan. It was embarrassing, you know, because I felt like I was bringing Sandy down because of my financial situation. But we decided we were going to continue to pray, continue to tithe, and trying to get our debt down. Michael also started giving to CBN. CBN stories that deal with medical missions, the children born with cleft palates, CBN goes into their communities and they have doctors that repair that. That's very heartwarming, very touching to me. Very valuable to spreading the gospel, to helping other people, because you, people can learn about the gospel if you go and help them. Another year passed as they budgeted and paid off more debt. So that kind of helped our credit score go up. Then Sandy met a realtor at a Bible study who put her in touch with a new lender. He saw places where things were paid off or closer to pay off, and God was looking out. Right at that time, Michael was promoted from a part-time online college instructor to full-time. With Michael's increased income, his credit judgment removed, and with 50% of their debt paid off, they were approved for a VA loan. The Cromwells were able to move into their new home. Thank you, Jesus. I was saying that a lot. Just being grateful that God does provide, like we were actually seeing that. I couldn't have gotten the house without the job. It was definitely a result of giving it in, in every way, you know, financially, my allegiance and devotion to, to the Lord, showing Him you know, where my heart is for Him. If we had stopped tithing, I feel like we still would have been in the, the same vicious cycle, probably still would have been in that same little apartment, still spinning our wheels at trying to pay down our debt. Now their old consumer debts are nearly paid off. In 2021, Sandy got a supervisory promotion along with a $10,000 raise. So now their combined annual income is $25,000 more than when they first married. God totally helped us be more wise with our money by instilling tithing and continuing to pray and being faithful to Him. You can have security and stability financially and otherwise in a world that does not have those things if you devote your life to the Lord. Well, you heard Sandy say, God helped us be wise with our money. And for some of you, you're watching, and God has helped you be wise as well in managing your finances. And others are still learning. Others of us are still, you know, falling in obedience to the Lord in this area. I think a great scripture, which I think you're probably familiar with, to apply to life and particularly managing our finances is Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. Again, you've probably heard it, but try and listen for the first time. It says, trust in the Lord. Now, that's an action. Sometimes we have to step out in our fear. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your heart, and lean not, this is crucial, on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, all your ways, and he shall direct your paths. I don't know about you, I want the Lord directing my path. I want him illuminating my path and directing my steps. And that scripture says to trust him with all our heart, lean not on our own understanding. Sometimes we're actually leaning on our own misunderstanding, right? We don't even sometimes really know how to manage our finances, but we have certain habits, certain ways we've been doing it. And even if it's in confusion, it's what we know. And here the Lord is saying, give everything to me. Give all you are, including our finances. Look, I can relate to this, okay? So my lovely wife and I have 20 years. We just celebrated 20 years, Terry. Wonderful. Um, we were engaged. We we're in premarital counseling. I highly recommend that for folks. Let someone talk to you about marriage and what you'll face. And in our second or third session, he said, okay, let's talk about money now. <laughs> and I said, no, we're good. I said, no, we're good. That was so foolish of me. He said, well, wait a second. You don't want to talk about money? I said, I'm not in any debt. I'm driving around a paid off Hyundai accent. My wife makes more money than me. Now, you know, we're fine. And he said, boy, you're going to be one. You're going to be unified. You are going to be one, one checkbook. I said, we're okay. Now, my wife left a higher paying job to move to where I was living. Okay. And that changed things. And whether I was just naive or overconfident or both, I began to see I needed to let the Lord help me in managing finances because, of course, what do you think the first major complication or crisis we had in our marriage? It was about money because I thought I was strong in that area. There's a great statement. It might have been Oswald Chambers who said, a perceived strength is actually a double weakness. So we may think we're okay. I don't need God in this area of my life. But I think one thing Michael and Sandy learned was letting God into their financial situation 
did great wonders in their wisdom for life. Now, here's another couple with a very interesting story. Jason was a saver, his wife, Angie, a spender. She had an arsenal of 17 credit cards at her fingertips. One day, she dug through her wallet, took out all her credit cards, and listen to this, she cut them up. I just like to spend. At the last point, I had 17 credit cards. A lot of them were um, department stores, jewelry stores, or American Express, Visa, those kind. Any kind of debt stressed me out. And we had a couple of car payments at that time also. That really stressed me out. I didn't like it. Like many couples, Jason and Angie Kabler had conflicting views about money. When we fought, we fought about money. I think if we would have had open communication in the beginning, I think our first seven years of marriage would not have been so hard. Jason grew up not quite sold on tithing. You know, if somebody asked me to share my money or to give my money for something, it was like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. This is my money, I want it. <laughs> However, by the time he married Angie, Jason had warmed up to the idea of tithing. While she managed the checkbook, he focused on building up his dental practice. I was trying to figure out how to run a practice, run a business, and, and it was very stressful. So I gave all that over to her. But when it came down to it, it wasn't her natural inclination to want to deal with that. The stress of handling their bills finally got to Angie. He started just questioning me, and I got very offensive. Like, why are you questioning what I'm doing? So much to the point that one night, I threw the checkbook at him, and I told him, you will take care of it. I will no longer pay the bills. At that point, he took the lead. He became more of the head of our household. Jason then began paying the bills. He also suggested the couple enroll in a financial strategy program through their church. The first few sessions that she went to, she basically sat there with her arms crossed and <laughs> doing this number. But as time went on, she started catching the vision a little bit. And so did I. I started learning a lot of things that I didn't know. At the end of one of the classes, Angie surprised Jason. The coordinator would always, uh, at the end of the night, he would say, is there anybody that wants to cut up their credit cards tonight? Angie stood up and started digging through her billfold, took out all of those credit cards, I believe it was 17, and cut every last one of them up. And I, I had no idea this was gonna happen. The Cablers also took marriage counseling to help them communicate better about money. I had to really go through a transition to learn how to let go and uh, learn that really it all belongs to God and that it's mine to manage. And it's more of a joy now to be able to give uh, rather than a stress. And um, obviously that's gotten much easier over the years. Once we got on the same page with money and finances, it. I think our, that's where our marriage did a 180 and we started flourishing. Today, the Cablers have no credit cards and no debt other than their mortgage. Jason's practice has grown as well, and he even writes a weekly blog about finances. A blessed 90% is always greater than an unblessed 100%. It's not the kind of math we learned in school, but when you exercise that faith, he will bless that 10% and multiply it. Be obedient with your finances and tithing and trust God. If I could encourage someone to just step out on faith and do it, try it for 90 days. Go ahead and give that 10% and trust God and watch the miracles that will take place. Appreciate Jason and Angie sharing their story. We can all really benefit from the wisdom they've learned. You heard them say it, it wasn't their natural inclination to live life this way, to give like this, to live in total obedience to what God directs us to do financially. But interestingly, when they started to take these steps and live this way, God brought peace to their marriage as well. It wasn't just, you know, they were better with their money, but peace came into their home and into their marriage. It really shows how Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 encompasses all of life. Here's a great scripture from Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. If you will only obey me and let me help you, 
then you will have plenty. And I think that scripture shows that sometimes we can actually cause a resistance to blessing or God wanting to pour out certain things because we're not walking in obedience. So I hope these stories have shown you we can trust God with our life. We can trust God with our finances. He wants us to steward our finances and manage them well for his glory. And there have been people this telethon week, we've been in a January fundraising telethon, and we are seeking to help people around the world. We want to share the gospel of Christ, bring humanitarian relief to people. And we have been asking people to come on board and give to others. And in fact, just yesterday, we got some great responses. These are from yesterday's program, Terry. We heard from West Decatur, Pennsylvania, $5,000. Leesburg, Florida, $5,000. I always mispronounce this. Spokane, Spokane, somebody's going to call us it's and tell Washington. us. It's Washington. $5,000 as well. Huntsville, Alabama, yesterday, someone called and pledged $8,000. And this, thank you for this blessing. Georgetown, Texas, someone committed $10,000 to what we're doing. Now, today, there are, there's a dear family from Florida who is challenging you to the end of this hour at $25,000. That means every dollar you give to the end of this hour will be matched up to and including $25,000. So let's pray over this challenge and for this family. Lord God, thank you for what you've done in this uh, January telethon. Thank you for the generosity of so many who want to help people around the world with a message of hope and tangible relief for their needs in life. Now we pray for those who made this challenge that you will bless and anoint them. And for those who are coming on board today and renewing a commitment to give to you through CBN, we pray for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So this challenge is through the end of the hour. Every dollar you give is matched up to and including $25,000. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. We would love to hear from you. Terry? Well, that call is what starts things moving. When you join the 700 Club, we have a gift for you. We want to send you the latest teaching from Gordon Robertson. With it, you'll discover the answers to three of life's biggest questions. It's called Divine Direction, God's Blueprint for Your Future. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. My latest teaching is about you and where you come from, more importantly, where are you going? In this teaching, you'll discover three of life's biggest questions. How you answer these very important questions can hold the keys to your future. In Gordon Robertson's latest audio teaching, Divine Direction, you'll discover the keys to a fulfilling life, what it means to be a child of God, how to correct negative self-talk, plus a daily devotional to strengthen your faith and so much more. God has uniquely made you. You're the only one of you in all of human history. You are the only one to accomplish the mission that he has specifically crafted you to fulfill. I hope this teaching will encourage you to go for God's best. Get divine direction when you become a CBN partner. This is an incredible teaching, and we want you to have it. It's our way of saying thank you for caring about others. So when you call now, there's our number, 1-800-700-7000, or you go to CBN.com. You can go there, go to the giving page, or you can text, if you will, uh, to 71777. Just text CBN. We want to send you Divine Direction, God's Blueprint for Your Life, and it comes with a 21-day devotional. We're all going through this devotional here at CBN. We want you to have it as well. So will you call now, make a difference. Andrew? Thanks, Terry. Lawrence Gibbs, he lost a six-figure job because of the pandemic, and his wife was only working part-time. Still, they never panicked. Instead, they felt peace and ended up having their best financial year ever. In May 2020, Lawrence Gibbs walked into his home early from work, still stunned by the news. I just want to share with you that as of today, I don't have a job. The company let me go today. They said because of COVID. I know I felt like a state of shock, but it took less than two seconds, and I was like, we'll be okay. It's going to be okay. Those were her words to me. I remember it. Baby, we'll be all right. Audrey and Lawrence needed faith to believe that, since Lawrence earned a six-figure salary in corporate finance. More pressure was added to their situation considering Audrey was retired from her career in banking and finance. She was bringing in an income working part-time for a financial lending firm. After the initial shock of Lawrence's layoff, 
they both say they felt God's peace. They didn't panic for two reasons. They were longtime savers and committed tithers. The way we tithe or the way we give, we give God 10% first, 15% to ourselves, and then the other 75% goes to bills and other discretionary things. So God honors that too, that we make ourselves a bill or make ourselves important. In Proverbs 3 and 9, the scripture says that the biggest act that you can show to God that you trust him is when you trust him with your finances. Totally. And that's what I had to do, and that's what I did. Lawrence hadn't always trusted God with his money. Early in their 35-year marriage, Audrey learned to tithe off her gross income, while Lawrence gave sporadically at church. So for about three years, Lawrence wrestled with the idea of tithing. I didn't realize that I was holding myself back or holding my family back from other blessings and moving forward. My relationship with God was not built up enough for me to really understand what I really was supposed to be doing. But I wasn't against my wife doing it. I think that really helped us out a great deal. At that time, Lawrence was promoted to a supervisory position in corporate finance with a 50% increase in his salary. In a new state and new church, they grew in their relationship with Christ. I prayed about it and I told God, I want us to be on the same page as it relates to tithing so we can be blessed financially together. Not that he wasn't blessing us and keeping us, but I knew if we felt the same way about it, it would make a big difference. After Lawrence was given another promotion that moved them back to their home state, he was still wrestling with the idea of tithing. I had been praying about it and my spirit and everything just jumped. It wasn't difficult for me to do then. It was not difficult at all. Once I started tithing along with my wife 10%, we saw an increase in favor, even more at our jobs. Things just got better for us and our kids. We were able to move in very, very nice neighborhoods. Our kids were in some finer and nicer schools. We've never experienced any serious lack since we've been tithing together. We've always progressed with jobs, with homes, with everything. He's always pushed us forward. It went hand in hand, and we were able to save, put money in the bank, and be able to afford to do vacation, little trips, and things of that nature. So after three decades of faithful tithing, they trusted God fully when the 2020 pandemic layoff hit. And both of us together as a team on that day showed that we had trust and faith in God, that we would be okay. The next month, Audrey took on more clients than she ever had. I'm a strict commission. It was like a miraculously in that June of 2020, I made the most money I've ever made in my life in one month. And it just sustained. Instead of Lawrence immediately going out and looking for a new job, they prayed about his new direction. They were reminded of an idea from several years ago about a new kind of serving dish. God clearly said, that's what you all need to do. We had to deal with different engineers and attorneys and patents and trade. We didn't know very much about that type of stuff. We dealt with real estate and lending. It's just unbelievable. Well, I didn't even pray and ask God to, to triple or quadruple my business. It just happened. I totally repaid his salary, his six-figure plus salary. All totaled, Audrey's business increased five times, and their invention, Easy Serve, hit the market. So we're getting sales as we speak. We're so blessed that God took an idea from a cookout to a product that is needed for the food industry. We're not chasing after money. It's about our relationship with God. We know if we do the things that he has for us, those things will follow. If you don't have a tithing relationship and you start one, God's gonna take care of you. You got to try it, test him. You heard Lauren say it's about relationship. It's not about chasing money. It's about relationship with the Lord and trusting him fully, even when it can be a little scary. You know, he said at one point in that story, I didn't realize I was holding God back. And that's what we're learning through these stories of other people who have experienced the crisis of being short on finances and maybe even short on hope. But they have said, Lord, I trust you fully with my future, even my financial future. Here it is in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2. And all these blessings shall come upon on you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So we learn to discern God's voice, trust him and act upon it. And God can move. We're giving God permission to move. We would love to hear from you. We're in the middle of a challenge. There's 20,000 left on this challenge, 26 minutes to go. $25,000 challenge, which means every dollar you give 
till the end of this hour, up to $25,000 will be matched. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. And people are calling. Ashley is over at the phone set. Ashley? I am. We've got some prayer center representatives right behind me answering your phone calls live. And we want 2023 to be your best year ever. And that's why we want you to have this new teaching and devotional from Gordon Robertson called Divine Direction. And as you listen to this, you're going to discover God's will for your life and passion for the work God has called you to do. It will also help you figure out where you fit in God's plan to reach a broken world. You are a divinely created human being. There is no one else in history like you, and God has a special plan for your life. Hello, this is Gordon Robertson. In my latest teaching, I examine three of life's biggest questions. Who are you? Where do you come from? Where are you going? How you answer these very important questions can hold the keys to your future. Hear Gordon Robertson's newest audio teaching, Divine Direction, God's Blueprint for Your Future. Gordon will guide you through the great questions each of us must ask and answer to discover our unique and specific purpose in life. As you unlock the answers to these three questions, you will see how God's plan can unfold for you. Get Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. Yours when you become a CBN partner. Well, here it is, guys. This is Gordon Robertson's latest teaching. As you just heard, it's called Divine Direction, God's Blueprint for Your Life. Not only is it an audio teaching, but it also comes with a 21-day devotional called Daily Direction, Seeking God's Guidance. And actually, as a ministry, we are going through this 21-day devotional. And I'm telling you, it is a blessing. So if you want to get your hands on this and you also want to say, yes, I want to honor God with my finances. And I also want to help preach the gospel to a broken world and be the hands and feet of Jesus in real tangible ways. If you want all of that, become a member of the 700 Club today. It's really simple. All you have to do is either call the number on your screen right now, 1-800-700-7000. It is a totally free phone call. You can also go to CBN.com or you can also text to give by texting CBN to 71777. From there, you're actually going to get a text message with a link. You click that link and it's going to send you over to our giving page where from there you can choose to join at whichever level level you would like to become a 700 club member at. You can join at $20 a month, which is 700 club. Some of you might already be there and I would just encourage you and pray prayerfully go up from there, maybe $40 a month, which is 700 club gold. Some of you might be able to go higher, which is the thousand club at $84 a month. Again, we just ask and pray that you prayerfully consider going up and joining at whatever level that God is, God is putting on your heart. So again, if you want to change lives and you also want this teaching and 21 day devotional, give us a call right now, 1-800-700-7000. Terry, over to you. Well, even as Ashley's giving you details on the how-to, I'm hearing uh, phone counselors in the background answering the phones. The studio is buzzing, yes, and you've got some great yeah, news, Yeah, we've too. got more great news. A family from the beautiful state of Colorado. You've oh, been yes. there, I'm sure. One of my favorites. Oh, yes. beautiful, this time of year especially. Want to add to this challenge, they are adding $25,000, which means every dollar you give up to and including $50,000 to the end of this hour is matched. And we thank you for your generosity. Let's pray. Father God, we pray you'll bless this family. Thank you for their generosity as they seek to reach the world with the gospel of good news and help people around the world. And we pray for those who are joining us today, Lord God. They'll feel your presence and your touch. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. That's a $50,000 challenge we have until the end of this hour, 37,000 still to go. We would love to hear from you. 1-800-700-7000 or text CBN to 71777. Terry? Well, Brenda Kelly lost her husband. Then she lost everything she owned. Brenda is an 89-year-old widow whose belongings were wiped out by the Kentucky floods. But here's how you helped her rebuild her life. When Eastern Kentucky was struck by heavy rain and dangerous flooding, for many people, the water came with little warning. It came fast. If we'd have waited too much longer, we probably wouldn't have made it out. We watched the water keep coming, keep coming. It got up on my house to here. Brenda's an 89-year-old widow without much of an income. And now, to go with no husband, <laughs> nothing. 
That's all I have. Brenda lost a lot, but she managed to keep her loved ones safe. The night of the flood, she had family staying over. We had three of our great-grandchildren here. We loaded them in a car. That's where we stayed till it was over. And I tried to tell them, we've got each other. Operation Blessing quickly mobilized to help families in Eastern Kentucky take their first steps toward recovery. Volunteers arrived at Brenda's house, ripped up damaged floors, and tore out flood-soaked drywall. Operation Blessing is a blessing. They've worked so hard today, and it is so hot. They've moved stuff out. They've carried garbage. They've worked so, so hard. Operation Blessing also brought the family emergency meal kits, water, and cleaning supplies to help them get back on their feet. They have to love people and love the Lord to do things like that for people, or they couldn't do it. They're loving people. Thanks to the support of Operation Blessing Partners, volunteers are helping families with their damaged homes and also bringing much needed hope. I would like to say to the partner, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Boy, it really does take all of us together, doesn't it? You know, those of us who are able to go, I look at those volunteers from Operation Blessing in the heat and they're working hard all day long. I look at Brenda, she's praying and she's asking God to make a way, not just for herself, but for her community. And then you all come in to that equation and you make it all possible with your generosity and your, your compassion for others. We say thank you. Listen, join the 700 Club now. There's so much going on. That's just that need in the United States. But when you join, you're all around the world and you're doing things every moment of every day and they couldn't happen without you. So will you go to your phone and call now? 1-800-700-7000. Ashley just told you the various levels you could join at. I just want to mention also when you call and you join one of those club levels, would you do it using Pledge Express? That's electronic monthly giving means your bank does all the work. It saves some money so that we can put even more of it into the lives of people like Brent them making a difference and you make that possible so call now Andrew yeah so glad we could help Brenda such a sweet story Susanna and her three sons live in a shanty made from scrap metal it's a step up from the lean-to tarp they once lived in her youngest boy cries at night because the family has so little food still their desperate situation never stopped her from dreaming and one day you made her dream come true Susanna is a single mother raising her three boys alone. For a whole year after her husband abandoned them, she lived in a lean-to made of tree branches and a tarp near Iquitos, Peru. When we used to live in the lean-to, the wind blew it down and we all got wet. We woke up shivering from the cold. Eventually, Susanna moved to a piece of land given to her by her brother. There, she built a shanty made of scraps of wood and cast off metal sheets. I suffered a lot with my boys. When the rains come with strong winds, we felt the house move. The roof made noises, and my sons got scared and cried. This is seven-year-old Ezekiel. Sometimes it rained hard. When the wind blew and the rain came in, we got wet. Susanna did her best to improve the house and roof whenever she found a new piece of metal or scrap of wood. This place did not have a good roof or strong walls. We had to eat on the floor, and we didn't have a bathroom. Susanna also struggled to find work. She sold snacks, but her daily income was limited. There was only enough money for them to eat one meal a day. What hurts me is seeing my little brother cry for food because mom comes home late at night. She worries about my little brother and me. I worry every single day. I can't help it. It hurts me to watch my children suffer. Then Operation Blessing offered to help. First, we built Susanna and the boys a sturdy new house. My biggest dream? was to have a safe home for my children with rooms, beds, and a table so we don't have to eat on the floor. 
Her new home has a kitchen, bathroom, beds, table and chairs, just like she asked for. Thank God. Not only do I have a new house, I also have a refrigerator, pots, spoons, plates, and other items to care for my children. Then to help her provide for the daily needs of her kids, we gave her what she needed, including training, so she was able to start a business selling food from her new home. Susanna said she now earns nearly three times what she used to make selling on the streets. My brothers and I are happy because they gave my mom a house. Now we eat three times a day. My children sleep comfortably now that they have their own beds. They are safe, happy, and content. Thank you. I am so grateful. This is what it's all about. CBN Partners, thank you for what you have made possible. That sweet family. The story really touches me, and it probably touches you, too. If you're a parent who checks on your kids at night as they're tucked in bed or checking on your grandkids and they're sleeping in their bed, this poor family, they're trying to put metal sheets up to keep the rain out and cold. They're short on food. But as CBN Partners, you know, you make your gift. You could be sleeping while this work's going on or going about your day. Look what you're doing around the world. They have a wonderful place to live. They have food. She has a business now. You changed a family's life. And that's the gospel message, a message of hope as we step out to give to others. So we say thank you. If you're not a CBN Partner, this is a great time to join us and hit the ground running and helping people around the world. Give us a call at one 800 700 we are in the middle of a challenge, which means it's a $50,000 challenge. Every dollar you give, up to and including $50,000, will be matched until the end of this hour. We've got $20,000 left to go and 15 minutes to do it. So give us a call. Join with us for the glory of the Lord at 1-800-700-7000. Ashley, over to you. Thanks, Andrew. Well, how would you like to have more joy and peace in your life this year? The great news is it can happen, and here's how. The latest audio teaching from Gordon Robertson, Divine Direction, God's Blueprint for Your Future. I can get filled with the joy, the love, peace of the Holy Spirit because I'm made in His image. That's what God wants. That's what He intended from the beginning. I'm supposed to manifest Him in human form. These are wonderful, energizing words. Divine Direction, God's Blueprint for Your Future, available now. Well, this audio teaching and 21 day devotional from Gordon Robertson is really just gonna help solidify who you are in Christ, what he's called you to, and just the love of Christ will overflow in your heart, in your mind, and in your spirit as you go through this audio teaching and 21 day devotional. I mentioned earlier that as a ministry, we're going through this and it truly is just such a blessing for everyone who's listening to the audio teaching and going through this devotional. So if you wanna partner with the 700 Club, we're actually gonna give you this, this is our way of of saying thank you. Thank you for saying yes. Saying yes to honoring God with your finances and helping people like you just saw in that story with that mom and children in Peru who didn't have the simple necessity of a shelter, a roof over her head so that she could have her children be safe and protected. Many people around the world just don't even have that simple necessity along with clean water. So if you want to help people in a broken world, you want to be the hands and feet of Jesus in a real tangible way by spreading the love of Christ. Become a 700 Club partner today. It's really simple. Give us a call 1-800-700-7000. You can also go to CBN.com or you can text CBN to 71777. At whatever level you want to join at, we're actually going to send you this teaching and 21 day devotional. If you join at 700 Club level, we're going to send you one copy. If you join at the 700 Club Gold, which is $40 a month, we're going to send you three copies. And if you join at the 1000 Club level, we're actually going to give you five copies and you also get a digital download so you can listen to this and follow along wherever you go. So give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Andrew? Thank you so much, Ashley. Listen to this story. They were down to their last $2, and payday was two days away. The Abbots didn't know how they were going to make it. Then they discovered a way to turn their finances around, not by cutting their expenses, but by adding one. When Bob and Debbie Abbott married, they wanted children right away. After five years and much prayer, Debbie gave birth to their daughter. When I held her for the first time, I couldn't talk because there wasn't any words that could begin to express how I felt about her. You know, I just loved her so much. Bob worked in sales for a lawn and garden company. 
Debbie was a special education teacher who decided to leave her job to be a stay-at-home mom. Now, with a 40% cut in their income and no savings to fall back on, they had to trust God to make ends meet. Things were going to be really tight, and we really didn't know how we were going to make it. I can remember being down to like $2 in two days till payday. That was kind of a struggle. God managed to pull us through it. With limited resources, the couple made sure to keep their budget to the bare bones. Anything that we wanted was off the table. Everything had to go toward living expenses. Another item not included in the budget was tithing. The Abbots gave offerings to their church, but not 10% of their income. Then one day, their pastor spoke about tithing in a way they'd never heard before. He made this statement that God doesn't need your money, He needs your faithfulness. And finally, it was like, we need to pay attention to this, you know, and take it seriously. Three months later, as Bob was paying the bills, he heard God speak to him. And God sort of said, do you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord, and he said, well, write the check. <laughs> At the time, Bob knew he was going to be $300 short for their household expenses. Nevertheless, he wrote the check. Two weeks later, he received a $300 Christmas bonus, and Debbie got a surprise check for $300 from the school district she had previously worked for. God supplied our needs. He supplied us with money to be able to keep up with our, our bills. I think that happened because we trusted God. Over the years, they had two more children. During this time, Bob was promoted and his salary doubled. He was also given a company car for business and personal use. We were in a better financial position than before we started tithing. Well, I got three kids. I got a nice house. I got a good job. God's blessed us tremendously. I can't afford not to tithe. Bob later received a promotion as an area sales manager, which meant a bigger territory and a relocation to Richmond. It also came with a 15% increase in salary. Once the children reached school age, Debbie went back to work teaching special education. The income she made was used to pay for their children's Christian school tuition. After 28 years, the company Bob worked for closed their sales office. At the time, he was making 10 times as much as when he started. Today, Bob enjoys his days working as an independent sales rep selling tools. Debbie retired in 2021 and is now working on her doctorate in education at Regent University. Any spare time they get, they spend with their children and grandchildren. The Abbots are thankful for all of God's provisions throughout the years. We're just very ordinary people that have been blessed extraordinarily. The Lord provided for all those years. And I look back now, I'm very grateful. Trust the Lord. I can't think of any better advice. Real people sharing their real experiences down to $2. And the Lord says, do you trust me? And the family says, yes, we're going to trust you. And the Lord revealed himself. Magnificent what God can do when we give him room to do it. Other people are joining in on this challenge. In fact, we're hearing from, a, uh, from Tennessee, Pennsylvania, and right here in Virginia, they want to add $30,000 to this challenge. Continuing to the end of the hour, the challenge is now $80,000. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the generosity of these folks who want to give to you through CBN. And we pray your anointing upon them and for all those joining with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You heard it. It's an $80,000 challenge. Every dollar you give until the end of this hour will be matched up to and including $80,000. So please give us a call, 1-800-700-7000, and come on board. Terry? Well, if you're already a 700 Club member, I hope you're as blessed by these stories as we are sharing them with you. Here's another difference you're making. She bullied, outcast. Those were Elaine's greatest fears for her son Daniel because he was born with a cleft lip. Then one day during a trip to the grocery store, Elaine's worst fears became reality. Take a look. When Daniel used to draw people's faces, he never added a smile to those drawings. His mom believed it was because her son was born with a cleft lip. When they handed me my baby, I was in tears. I couldn't understand why this was happening to him. No one in our family ever had a cleft lip. I thought maybe this is punishment for something I did wrong. Simple errands like trips to the grocery store caused trauma for the family too. My son became aware that he had a cleft lip and he felt sad when people looked at him strangely. 
I remember one time in the store, a kid was staring at Daniel and started calling him names. That has been my biggest fear, that my son would be an outcast and be bullied. Daniel and his family live in a remote town in the Philippines. His dad works as a truck driver, but earns just enough for food and rent. We tried taking care of some pigs for another family to earn money for Daniel's surgery, but the cost was too great. Then Operation Blessing came to their community and arranged for Daniel to receive free surgery at a hospital 75 miles from their home. Finally, my son would get the operation we have been waiting for. The surgery was a success. Today, Daniel has a new smile, as do the faces in his drawings. Seeing my son's new smile assures me that he will have a bright and happy future. I'm happy that I got my operation. Thank you. That little boy's life is forever changed by your kindness and generosity. Thank you, 700 Club members. Listen, whether you're joining for the first time or going up to another level right now, when you do it, I want to remind you, please use Pledge Express. It allows us to put even more of your gift right into the lives of people like Daniel. So call now, 1-800-700-7000. Join us. Andrew? Love to share these stories about how your gifts are helping people around the world. Like this one, 33 years old and losing her sight. This mother had a cataract in her left eye. She was tripping over things and bumping into people. And it got so bad, she actually had to quit her job. And she could never leave the house by herself. Olga Lopez noticed that she wasn't seeing clearly through one of her eyes. Then someone at the shop where she worked asked her a question. She looked at me strangely and asked if I knew there was something in my eye. She said it was a white spot. I went and looked and saw it for myself. At age 33, Olga had developed a cataract in her left eye. A few months later, the cataract got worse. It affected Olga at work. There were a lot of people who came into the store. I bumped into them because I didn't see them and the light bothered me. One day she was walking down the street and didn't see a metal pipe sticking out from a pickup. She came within inches of injuring her face and eye. Olga's husband got so nervous about his wife's safety that he asked her to stop working and not go out alone. She started crying. I consoled her and told her I was going to cover all the expenses. Now, with only one income, paying for eye surgery was not possible. I wanted to have the surgery so I could keep helping my family financially. Eric's salary was not enough. A week later, Olga received a call from Operation Blessing. A staff member told her that her case had been referred to us by the eye clinic. At first, we couldn't believe it. Now we have hope. Operation Blessing paid for Olga to receive free eye surgery. A surgeon replaced the cataract with a new inner ocular lens. When they removed the patch, I told her to cover her eye to know if she really can see me. And she said, yes, she could see me. In a short time, she was able to return to work. The people who paid for this operation are a blessing to us. I am so happy and grateful. Thank you. See that family embracing with such joy? I mean, you have helped make that possible with that free surgery you helped provide. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you are doing for folks. We need more of you to come on board. We're in the middle of a challenge, 26,000 left. To meet this challenge with just over three minutes, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000, and say, I'd like to join the 700 Club and help folks around the world. Terry? Well, here's another way you're making a difference. For 10 days, Galena and her mom huddled in their basement. Above them, rockets and bombs exploded as Russia invaded Ukraine. That was almost a year ago. Now, Galena has a brand new life at a safe home in Israel, and she is so thankful that you helped make that happen. Galena and her mother Tatiana are from Mariupol, one of the first cities Russia attacked in its war with Ukraine. I worked at a supermarket. The windows rattled from the explosions. The store was packed with people. There was such panic and fear, no one knew what to do. Their apartment was damaged by rocket fire, so Galena and her mother took shelter in the basement of the building. As food ran out, Galena bought stale, moldy bread, just so she and her mother had something to eat. I never prayed so much. Night and day, I asked God to have mercy on us. 
After 10 days in the basement, a rescue bus came and took Galena and her mother out of the city. They spent eight days on the road before finally arriving in Moldova. Because they're Jewish, they were then able to fly to Israel as refugees and new immigrants. Israel is a safe place and we're grateful to be here. They rented an apartment with money from a government grant, but Galena still needed to provide for her elderly mother. They didn't have appliances in their apartment or much food. We came with only the clothes on our backs. We knew we couldn't make it on our own. We needed help. Then Galena met with one of our volunteers and learned about CBN Israel. We started giving her and her mother groceries. We also got them a much needed stove and washing machine. In our war-torn Ukraine, I could only dream of fresh bread. But now I am in a peaceful place and you bring me food I am extremely grateful to you for helping my mother and me. Thanks to those who support CBN Israel, Galina and Tatiana now have hope for their new life in Israel. Your support and your prayers are very important. We feel your prayers when we face difficult situations and the Lord sends the right people to help us. May the Lord repay you for your generosity. That's Galina and Tatiana's story. You are helping so many refugees, but you're also still in Ukraine in 19 centers making a difference. Andrew? Terry, people have been so generous. Did you read a couple of people I we've heard this from is here? Brenda, she's from Chesapeake, Virginia, $2,500. And then Angelica from Findlay, Ohio, $2,500 as well. Wow. Yeah, and we are about to go over the top on this challenge. Here's another $2,500 from Pleasant Grove, Alabama. And we appreciate all your gifts and especially these we're grateful for. Garden Grove, California, $20,000. Thank you so much, Garden Grove. And Lake Placid, Florida, $30,000. We're so humble, we're grateful. What a difference you're gonna make around the world. So we had a $80,000 challenge. And against that, you gave 120,667. We are grateful, we thank you. Let's pray, Terry. Father God, Ashley and Terry and I, Thank you for the outpouring of support and love from people who want to give to you. Lord, bless them. Bless them, we pray. Let them feel your touch in their finances and in their lives and relationships. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.